So, um, yes, I'm Lisa Hughes, and um, I own a, a little company called Why Not Coaching, which actually, when I um, started Why Not Coaching back in 2006, I sent a few press releases out to different media companies, and the local media, which is in Bath, I live in, uh, in the southwest, and they called me up to say they were going to take a send a photographer around to take a picture of me in my bus. So it's not that kind of coaching. I don't do, I don't drive a big coach around the country. I actually do sort of executive coaching. Um, so um, Why Not was kind of born um, out of a bit of an obsession that I have for helping companies to have really great organisational culture. And I'm boringly sad about it because I just, I just love it. And there's so many companies that don't do it, but I won't, gonna, not going to talk about that today. Um, so um, when I started my career, which was quite a long time ago now, I'm, I'm actually getting on a bit. Um, I started out actually as a secretary in a media company and I had a desire to do what you ladies do, but unfortunately I was never really cut out for it. And I learned that quite early on. It was in the days of um, typewriters and tipex and carbon copies. And so we're going back that long. It was a long, long time ago. And uh, the two things that I learned though in those very early days was first of all that um, I wasn't cut out for it. That was the very first thing. But the second thing that I learned, because I was, I was working for eight um, account directors in an advertising agency, was that I was actually the gatekeeper to the people that other people wanted to talk to. So as a result of that lesson, I've kind of always looked after receptionists, PAs and secretaries, because I've always understood the, the value and the importance of you guys. And um, I've also been incredibly privileged to work with some fantastic PAs. And in my last job, before I started Why Not Coaching, um, I worked for a newspaper company for Metro, which is the, the largest freezing newspaper in the world now. And um, my role at Metro um, was very varied, but I had some amazing PAs. And actually, without those girls, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So I'm, I'm totally in awe of you, you ladies and the job that you do. So um, before I came along, I did a little bit of research because when Jeff asked me to speak sometime last year at the conference, I was kind of thinking to myself, I'm a bit of a wild card. I'm not entirely sure, you know, what value I'm going to be able to offer you ladies. So I did a little bit of research and spoke to all the girls that I know that are PAs and said, right, if you've got 30 minutes in a room with a coach and a handful of other ladies, you know, what would be the best value that you could get at that time? So we're going to have a bit of a workshop. Um, so I'm actually going to ask you to do some stuff rather than me just standing here and, and sort of speaking to you. And um, the theme that came back was around confidence and self-doubt. Um, and it didn't kind of surprise me that that was the overwhelming theme. But what might surprise you is that when I'm coaching people, 99% um, probably of the people that I speak to have um, issues around confidence and self-doubt. And I think that gets tougher because the, the higher up an organisation you get, and I, I don't know at what level of people you're, you're working with, but the, the further away from people you get, and it makes it more tricky to have people to talk to, and especially for your roles around confidentiality. And I think you know, sometimes that can hinder um, people's confidence. So um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a little workshop session, and I'm going to introduce you to something called Gremlins. And I'm going to, hopefully, in the very short space of time that we've got, give you some tools to be able to self-coach so that if that is something that you've kind of struggled with at any point in time, if it's not right for you and you know people who might struggle with confidence, whether it's friends or relatives or whatever, then these are tools that, you know, might help you. Now, ideally, I'd have, you know, a couple of hours with you and we'd be able to knock it on the head. So in 30 minutes, it's, we're really limited as to you know, what we're going to be able to achieve, but I'm hoping that you'll go away with something quite useful. So I'm just gonna, this quote is by Eleanor Roosevelt, who was the first lady of the United States of America back in the 30s and 40s. Um, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And I think that's a really powerful phrase because um, more often than not, um, the people that stop us from doing things are ourselves. Um, and what she's kind of referring to here is something called kind of limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs is something that's kind of born out of years and years and years of experiences. Now, I don't know if anybody in here is, is a parent. 
if there's parents in the room, how many times a day do you hear yourself saying no to your children? Don't do this, you can't do that. You shouldn't do it like this, you should do it like this. And, and so those experiences, whether it's parents or whether it's um, teachers or whether it's bosses or whether it's siblings or you know anybody that we kind of encounter throughout our lives, sometimes if we're not living up to somebody else's expectation, you know, I don't know if you, when you're sort of cooking with a partner in the kitchen, you see them cutting an onion in a different way to the way that you're cutting an onion. You know, do you kind of stop yourself from, you know, saying, you shouldn't do it like that, you should do it like this. I mean, that's just me. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it is, it's all of those experiences where we just, you know, we want people to do things the way that we want them to do it because we think that's the right way. And as you know, there's more than one way of skinning a cat. It's just, it's about allowing people to learn for themselves, especially with children. If they don't learn, they don't know what the consequences are, and then they're never ever going to um, be able to learn. So, with limiting beliefs, you know, the more and more and more of those experiences you have, I think um, eventually it kind of leads to these niggly little voices that live in your head that, um, you know, are there to just knock your confidence. And even though intellectually we all know that we're capable of doing lots and lots of things, these niggly little monkeys kind of get in the way quite often and tell us that we can't do things, stop us from achieving really great, great things. And I've been very privileged to meet all manner of gremlins in the last kind of six years whilst I've been coaching. Not in person, obviously, but we've, we've brought to life an awful lot of critters that could be, you know, red spiky things or green slimy things or just white hazes. But the important thing when I am working people is to really make it as lifelike as possible. So it makes it really easy to, um, to kind of manage. So because of that, um, there are themes which come out all the time. And um, in front of you, you've got some cards. And um, these cards are really, they're, they're, they're not what your gremlins are going to look like. Um, but they're a catalyst to help you to kind of understand, you know, the voices that you might occasionally hear and what they might sort of sound like. So we're going to use these in a few minutes, but I'm going to introduce you to them so that you know roughly um, what I'm talking about. So the doubter is, a, is the little monkey that, um, I mean, this actually played a big part in my career for, um, <laughs> for quite a long time. When I was 30, I was promoted to um, the first female board director of Metro. And, and it was a fairly big thing for me at the time. But I used to go to board meetings and I would sit there with the likes of Lord Rothermere, who owns the whole of Associated Newspapers, and goodness knows what else, and Paul Dacre, mm -hmm. who's the editor of the Daily Mail and quite an influential character and little old me. And I used to sit in these meetings as the only girl amongst a bunch of blokes and think, what the hell am I doing here? You know, I'm just Lisa from Poynton in Cheshire. I didn't even get that many O-levels. Why do I deserve, you know, to be in this room? You know, I genuinely shouldn't be here and I'm going to get found out at some point in time. So I should just, you know, get out of here. So this doubter, you know, is the kind of character who does that. He thinks you're going to get found out at some point. And, um, Fortunately, I didn't. I managed to get away with it for quite a long time. But uh, yes, that's the doubter. The skeptic is um, a character that kind of doesn't really trust anybody. So I don't know if you've ever sat in a meeting where you know, you're, you've know you got an idea and uh, or a question to ask or something kind of pops into your head that's relevant to the conversation that's happening around the table. And the little voice in your head's going, don't answer that. Don't ask that because you're going to sound really stupid. You really shouldn't do that. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. Just forget about it. And then two seconds later, somebody asked the same question. You sat there going, oh, why didn't I ask that question? But it's just that little bit of self-doubt that kind of gets in the way and doesn't trust that you've got a good question to ask. And then there's the mind reader who is, um, he likes to look or she likes to look into her crystal ball into the future and um, try and um, put a negative spin on everything. So say for example you'd been asked to organise a conference or asked to you know speak today or something like that. This little voice is going, you'll look really silly if you stand up or if you're organising a conference, nobody will turn up and they'll all have a really bad time and you generally shouldn't do it. So it's that gain, that voice that's negative, it's looking forward to the future and saying, you know, things things aren't going to be as good as you think they are. The blamer just likes to place fault on everybody, never accept responsibility um, for itself. So if you can see something unravelling before you and 
um, you know, usually it's the best thing to do is to kind of stand up and take responsibility, but the blamer will try and defer that responsibility to get you into even deeper trouble. Um, the quitter is somebody, actually this one, this one plays a big part in my life as well. If anything to do with sport is where the quitter kind of comes into my life. So, you know, if for example, you know, somebody says, oh, come on, Lisa, let's go for a run. We could do a half marathon. It's only 13 miles. You could do a half marathon. I'd be the one kind of thinking, no, you can't do that. You'll be the slowest. You should just give up whilst the going is good. You know, you'll probably fall over and break your legs or something really mm -hmm. stupid. So definitely don't, you know, get involved in this. Just, you know, give up now. And then the smirker is, is likely, a bit like my mother, likes to watch something happen and, um, you know, and inevitably look forward to that moment where she can say, I told you so. You know, I don't know if you've got parents or siblings or whatever in your life. We all, actually, we probably all do it as parents as well. But, um, so this, this little critter is, is really there just to kind of watch everything go wrong and then tell you, I've told you so. So these are six. These are six kind of themes, if you like. They're not exact um, gremlins. They don't. They're not maybe yours. But what I'd like you to do is just spend the next couple of minutes just looking through them and see if you recognise any of the things that they say. And if, in specifically, if you could just kind of hone in on one rather than six today, because we haven't got the time to go through all six of them. You might find that some. Uh, there's more than one that's familiar to, familiar to you, but if you've just got one that kind of stands out the most, then then take that one and and we'll move on in a few minutes. Um, and I'm going to ask you to do some some work. Is everybody okay with this so far, or does it all sound like a load of gobbledygook? Is it? Yeah. Are we okay? We've got some nods. Yes. If you don't think it's appropriate to you, as I said, it might be appropriate to one of your friends or families or something. Let me just give you these two whilst you're all looking at them. We've not got the ideal setup to uh, to be able to write, so I hope you've got stuff to lean on. What I aim to do is to be able to give you just some questioning, sort of self-coaching questions that are going to help you to work through. You've got the, the doubter. Oh, he's a popular character this morning, the mind reader. Fantastic. So we've all got one that we can work on. Right, that's a good, that's a good start. Okay, right, what I want you to do, in, and this is, as I said, it's a workshop, so I need you to just kind of start to look at these things. And I'd like you to, you can either write it on the paper or you can write it on the back of the, the card. Sometimes I, when I'm working with clients and we use the card, sometimes it's good to write on the card because then you'll, you'll find it and then you'll remember what you've written rather than it being on a separate piece of paper. But I've given you the questions to take away as well so that you can do the same exercise um, with any others at a later date. So the first question is about, you know, what is your most limiting belief of yourself? So where do you really doubt yourself? What is it that kind of comes up every now and again that you, you know, you really doubt or don't believe? So that's the first question, and it's just to write it down. Is that okay to do that? The point of answering these questions and even asking them of yourself, because when do we ever sort of ask these questions of ourselves? Never, really. It's just to kind of look at it from a slightly different perspective. So even recognising that actually, you know, you are in control. It's just sometimes there's, you know, this niggly little thing inside of us that stops us from doing things. But the important thing is around taking that control back. I do a lot of work with people around stress management. And quite often, the, the bigger, biggest causes of the stress are the people you know, not allowing themselves to do things and getting into a real state because of these um, gremlins. And it's just having the time out to recognize them, be very aware, know what they look like. And in, in a proper coaching session, you know, we would really spend time you know, looking at these things and really making sure that it comes to life for you. Because as I said, we're all completely different. This is just a catalyst to try and help you. So really understanding what are the emotional triggers as well. So, you know, what happens to us in this situation. So if we do start to, you know, kind of get tense or stressed or whatever it is that's kind of stopping us from doing something, just to understand, 
you know, how we can move forward and, you know, we build almost like little first aid kits with, with some of my clients to know what are the things that are going to help them, you know, and it might be that they just have to get up, you know, take some deep breaths and go for a walk for 10 minutes. It might be about going doing yoga or it might, whatever it is, it just helps people to calm down and sort of start to understand how we can move forward. So these are the triggers, and, I, and, and if you've got more than one of these cards that you recognise, what I'm going to ask you to, to do beyond this is to do the same exercise now that you're going through it and you know the questions so that you can start to really understand um, what the drivers are. Now, believe it or not, there's, there's a positive and a negative role. More often than not, it's negative, but actually it can also be very positive. So if you're in a situation whereby, you know, you're a bit fed up at work and, you know, you want to tell your boss that he's a complete imbecile and stick his job where the sun don't shine, then the, the gremlin, if that kind of comes into force and say, no, you've been a bit silly now, you know, you don't really want to do that, you know, then that is the positive force of them. It could be a lot more serious than, than that example. But, you know, sometimes it's good to kind of recognise, you know, with, with children, in particular, you know, when you're stopping them from doing something that could endanger themselves, you know, for ourselves, if we're doing something that might endanger, then you're going to stop, and that's when you, your gremlin actually has a, a good role to play. But on the whole, you know, they're generally quite negative. Um, so really, it's kind of thinking about then, and these are a few more questions for you to, to sort of think about, is, you know, when can they be useful, and what do they do to you personally that's helpful, and what do they do to you that's unhelpful? and sort of just thinking about that. So if, if you are able to follow that, that kind of line of questioning with the gremlin that you've picked out, would you like to spend another couple of minutes just thinking about those questions? Okay, is everybody all right with those few questions? Okay, so the next thing then is to try and sort of think about how you can move on from it. And as I said, this is all very brief, but um, so step one, I just want you to focus on, on using the opposite of what you've got. So look, what, who had the, there are doubt, there's some doubters in here, aren't there? There was, yeah, so if, say for example, you know, the doubter is more likely to say to you, you can't do that. So the opposite, of course, is that you can do that. But I want to think about, you know, a situation that's, that's happened recently where your doubter might have kind of come and, and stopped you from doing it. And I want you to then sort of imagine that you have done it. So it's really thinking through and you're looking forward to the future and thinking what that might look like when you physically have done the thing that the doubter might stop you from doing. Is this making sense? So as it says up here, you know, note the response in the future positive 10. So I have run a marathon. So if that's, if that's what the doubter is saying, you can't run a marathon, you're saying to actually, I can run a marathon and I have run a marathon. So it's about thinking about that future positive tense, which is the opposite, the very opposite of what your gremlin might say to you. So if you've got an instance that's happened very recently that you might have noted, I think it was question four or something, um, you know, which try and use that specific incident to be able to think how that might have been if you'd physically done it and the doubter hadn't have got in the way. Does that make sense? I've got some blank faces or just people thinking? Thinking? Yeah, it's, I, I, you weren't expecting to come in here, were you, and have to answer all these questions? <laughs> I wasn't expected at all. There's going to be a very good lady talking about confidence later on, so if we don't quite grab it now, I think she'll do it later. <laughs> Actually, just helped helped me make a decision. Oh! Because I failed my driving test on Friday again, the fourth time, and I'd kind of said to myself, "Why am I doing this? If I pass my driving test, when do I really need to drive? I work in London. I live right near the train station. Will it just make me lazy? I won't walk everywhere. Um, and mm. can I even afford to buy a car and run a car when I do pass it? Why why am I even bothering with?" with this because it just stresses me out. It's a horrible feeling and and but then just thinking about it in that sense of well how would I have felt if I'd passed, it's made me decide that yeah I do need to keep like, Yay, well it. done. That was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that was brilliant. Right. That's great. Yeah no it just I, I looked it looked blank because it it, it wasn't yeah. like a vacant thing. It was yeah. like that makes complete sense. Fantastic. Yeah. If you think about 2012 and the Olympics, you know, all of those people, I mean, I don't, is anybody going to the Olympics in here? 
yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're going to try and get into town and go to the Olympics. But if you think about, you know, somebody who's just about to run a hundred meter race, they almost have to put themselves on the finishing line before they've even started. They have to believe. I'm going to finish this and I'm going to be better than everybody else and I'm going to win and I'm going to be quicker and before they've even started the race. So yeah, it's a really good exercise whenever you can to try and imagine, you know, what it will look like, you know, for you to, you know, what it will it be like for you to have a car? What fun are you going to have when you've got a car and you can go to your mates really easily and you know, it's just thinking about that next step rather than stopping yourself the first hurdle and think I can't do this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting swimming lessons tonight, not because I can't swim, but because I swim like a middle-aged woman now with my head like this. <laughs> I don't get my hair wet. And I want to be able to use swimming for fitness. And, uh, and I can't breathe when I'm underwater, and I just find it all very stressful. And I'm trying to teach my three-year-old to swim, and I'm telling her, put your face in the water, put your face in the water. And I won't even put the face, my own face in the water. And so I'm kind of nervous about this thing, but I have to think, you know, before I even get there tonight, of course I can flip and swim with my face in the water. You know, I'll be fine. So it's about thinking forward to that next stage of what something positive looks like rather than stopping at the first hurdle. So has everybody managed to um, do that or do you want a little bit more time to... Okay. So the next bit is the final step of our very brief coaching session on, um, on self-awareness is about um, actually thinking have you achieved this. So you can say, I have successfully, you know, swum a half marathon or whatever, I don't know what it will be by the time I've finished this. And, and I actually, to get to that stage, this is what I did. So for me, it'll be, I'm going to start swimming lessons tonight. I've bought a pair of goggles so I can actually put my face in the water. I'm going to go weekly. You know, I might team up with another friend and go swimming and we can race or, you know, whatever it is. It's about thinking about the individual action steps that you have to put in place to successfully achieve, you know, the, the, the thing that we've kind of stopped doing. So that's the, the very final thing that I'd like you just to spend your last few minutes on today is to what have you done you know when you've successfully achieved whatever limitation you you kind of acknowledged earlier what's the final thing that the things that you're going to do to make that happen when you leave this room today Is there anybody else other than katie that would like to share what they've what they've written down. Anybody brave enough? Go, on, go for it. Yeah, um, I turned down the opportunity to speak to uh, at work. We got our receptionist from one of the local colleges. They do um, sort of after year year levels training for peers and secretaries. And they came to meet me and said, oh, with all of your experience, would you come? And I made excuses and turned down the opportunity to speak to a bunch of 19-year-olds. Um, but I will go back next week and agree to speak at the next one. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Well things. done. Yeah. Because I just, why not? Why exactly? Why not? <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, actually that's a very common thing. Well, not, not many people love you know public speaking, and it mm. is that little gremlin you know that will sit there on the shoulder and say to you you know you know you're going to look silly or people are going to laugh. Truth is, nobody ever knows what you're going to say. You know, so there's an ex there's no expectation necessarily about the physical words that are going to come out of your mouth. So you, you know you'll be fantastic. Well done. Anybody else want to share anything? Feeling brave enough to say. I know one of mine is to stop eating Easter eggs, and I, every time I open the fridge door and I see yet another one of my daughter's eggs that she's forgotten about, I'm like, oh, a cup of tea and an Easter egg. And it's not helping. <laughs> so, um, okay, so that was a really quick introduction to to Gremlins. Has, has everybody found, or has anybody found it unhelpful to start off with? I'd like to. No, anybody found it really helpful? Is it going? Are you going to really go and do some stuff as a result of this? Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm really pleased about that. I wasn't sure what we could achieve in 30 minutes, and and it was the, your lovely colleagues who I spoke to that sort of said that this might be helpful to them. So, I, what I was going to ask you to do before you um, leave is, um, I've got. If anybody is interested, I'm going to offer. Um, 
three coaching sessions. It'll probably be over the phone because you're all, all over the country or um, via FaceTime if you've got iPads or iPhones or whatever. So if you're, if you're interested in having one of those three places, if you could just fill in this really quickly and leave it with me, then I can, I can get in touch with whoever comes out of the draw first. Is that of any use to anybody? Yeah. Okay, so if I just pass that to you and then you take one and pass it on. Well done, ladies. I don't think you're expected to work, but, <laughs> you know, you come for a day off, going in the countryside.